again everyone. In this tutorial I'm going to be talking about Skywatcher mounts and the various different ways of controlling them. I've been on quite a journey myself with my HEQ5 and I'd just like to share that with you. Uh, I've already covered some of those options in other videos that I've done but I feel like I've really been on the complete journey now and I just want to show you those different options and explain the pros and cons of them. don't know where you are on your journey uh, but uh, you might find some of the setups useful. So let's get into it. So the first setup that most people use is simply to have their telescope and camera on the mount. The mount's plugged into the power and the, it has its SynScan hand controller and you've got some kind of remote on the camera with a wired or wireless to actually fire it off and, and take your shots. And that's a really good way to start out with the mount, learning how to operate it, how to set it up. There's plenty uh, to learn about and how to uh, actually assemble the mount, how to balance it and polar align it uh, and star align it and all those things can be learned with this uh, first setup. I've done a separate tutorial on the setup process which I'll put a link to at the end of this video. Um, so the, the camera in this setup is probably a DSLR and I say that because many people when they start out astrophotography will use ca a camera that they've already got which is often a DSLR and with the DSLR, the image is obviously stored on the camera. Uh, so you're remotely telling the, the camera to take pictures and, and those pictures are stored on the camera. Uh, if it was an, a dedicated astrophotography camera, often they don't have the ability to store the picture on the camera itself. And so you wouldn't be able to use that in this particular setup. You would need something else in the setup to, to actually store the images on, which I'll come to a bit later. Uh, so in this setup, the, all the telescope pointing is all controlled from the scene scan and control, uh, and uh, that, that's fine. So what problems if you, uh, would, would we likely encounter with this kind of setup? Well, the first is, and probably one of the biggest problems that people often have, is getting what's called uh, lost in space. Uh, quite a funny name for it, but uh, kind of appropriate. And this happens when you're trying to use, uh, or you are using quite a long focal length, so anything sort of 400 millimeters and up, uh, and particularly when you're using small sensors in your camera as well. Uh, those two things both work together to, uh, smaller sensors and longer focal lengths, work together to reduce the sort of angular field of view that you actually see in your photo. And uh, the smaller that angular field of view is, the harder it is to actually get your alignment star into your photo when you're trying to do your alignment. And if you don't have the alignment star in the photo when you first try and slew to it, you don't know which way to move to actually get it into your shot. And that can be really frustrating, uh, uh, a really frustrating situation. So I'm going to uh, show in a second uh, a way of solving that problem, which you might find useful. Uh, so that's one of the problems with this setup. Uh, and the other problem with it, of course, is everything that you see in this picture has to be outside. And so in order to operate it, you have to be outside as well. You may love being outside at night, that's, that's fine. Um, but uh, if it's cold and you're imaging for many hours, obviously there are issues with, with being outside for so long. So that is something to think about and, uh, and uh, that has its limitations. Uh, and of course, you can only use a camera that stores its own data like a DSL. So let's just address this getting lost in space issue. Uh, the, uh, one of the simplest ways of fixing this problem of getting lost in space is to add what's called a TELRAD or, or other pointing, similar pointing aid to your telescope. Now the TELRAD is uh, what I used for this for a long time. And the TELRAD is a little black plastic box with a battery, an LED, a little uh, graticule ring, a mirror and a piece of glass. And uh, you see here down the bottom what it looks like. And uh, you can either, you can mount it, it's designed to be mounted really onto your telescope. So it's got this sort of self-adhesive base that you just peel off the, the backing and then stick it onto your telescope. Uh, but there are also other ways of mounting it. Uh, you know, you have just be using a camera and a lens. You might want to make a little bracket to put next to it and, and put the tail rod on the bracket instead. Um, but uh, essentially, it's like a little head-up display. And uh, when you look through the glass here, looking through this way, you see obviously you see see the sky through the glass, but you also see overlaid on that these three 
red concentric rings. Uh, and the position of those rings uh, you can adjust by turning these three little uh, screws on the back. So what you do after you mount it on your telescope is in the daytime is to put your telescope on, on the mount, just stationary, not moving, tracking or anything, and point it at uh, some fixed object like the top of a telegraph pole or something like that. And then uh, adjust its position until, you, until that, that object is right in the center of your camera's uh, image. So and once it is, look through the tail rad, turn the brightness of the rings up to maximum so you can see because in the daytime it would be hard to see otherwise. And just adjust those three little screws until those rings are also centered on the same spot that the camera is looking at. And after that, so long as you don't knock the tail rad or knock those three little screws, if you look through the tail rad and adjust the telescope pointing to get a star in the middle of the three rings, uh, then uh, your camera will have that star in its shot and that, that rescues the whole uh, getting lost in space situation. So here's a picture I actually found online. Uh, this is a sort of typical view looking up uh, along the telescope and through a tail rad. In this case, it's looking at the moon uh, to show you what it looks like when you look through a tail rad. So what problems does this uh, setup still have? Well, you, of course, you haven't solved the being outside thing. You're still outside in the cold a lot. We've just solved the lost in space thing. You can still only use cameras that store their own data at like DSLRs. So the next evolution if you like is to move yourself indoors and the first part of that is to introduce a computer uh, and uh, then to connect that computer initially just to your camera so you're remotely controlling your camera and also at least being able to see the pictures that the camera is taking even if the actual masters are stored on the camera uh, you may be downloading them to the laptop as well or you may just be previewing them uh, now they, uh, there's a range of different pieces of software available, uh, some free, some not free. Um, and these include Backyard EOS, which is the one I started out with. I, use a, I, I initially used a Canon DSLR, and uh, that works very well with Backyard EOS, the Canon version of Backyard EOS. Uh, and I had uh, many, many uh, enjoyable sessions using that software. It was really good. I have since migrated to Sequence Generator Pro because I bought a dedicated astrophotography camera and there are other tools uh, like Astrophotography Tool and Nina as well. So that's a good way of starting out the migration to going indoors to get warm uh, and uh, is to get yourself a laptop or PC, uh, suitable cable to connect from USB to your camera and some software to do the remote control of the camera and the capturing of the images. So but we've still got problems here. Um, the, the camera pictures, we've actually introduced a problem, the camera pictures are now being viewed indoors, but the control of the telescope pointing is still outdoors. Um, so in particular, when you are trying to do your star alignment, so after you've done most of your setup, you've done your, you've put everything together, you've done your balancing, you've done your polar alignment, and you're then ready to do star alignment. So you have to go outside and use the SynScan hand controller to command uh, the mount will tell it you're doing a star alignment and to try and salute the object um, and you're still using the tail rad uh, to get uh, to get the the star the alignment star right in the middle of your uh, camera's field of view uh, and the uh, it generally that involves a lot of walking backwards and forwards between indoors and outdoors because to see a picture you have to be indoors but to move the mount you have to be outdoors uh, but it's not too much of a, of a bind. Uh, just be aware that some of your activities are outside and some are inside. It's a perfectly good setup, this, and a really good way to start that evolution process of, of bringing yourself indoors. But it's by no means the whole story. So the next step in the evolution is to introduce control of the mount to the laptop as well. And uh, I've done a whole tutorial, actually, on this particular setup where I introduced uh, a... Uh, uh, a piece of software called ASCOM onto my laptop. Uh, ASCOM is, a, is only for Windows. If you've got a Mac, it's a bit problematic, although there is a thing called Alpaca being developed, which uh, should resolve that. Um, but if you install the ASCOM platform on your Windows laptop or, or PC, and also install something called EQ ASCOM, which is EQ Mod for ASCOM. Uh, EQ Mod is this uh, control interface that enables you to 
remotely control a telescope down, down through this cable. Now the cable, uh, this e e cable that we've introduced is going from the bottom of the hand controller with what's called an RJ10 connector up to, uh, it actually goes to an RS232 connector which uh, many computers don't have anymore. Uh, so you end up plugging in one of these little adapters here. Uh, this is the RJ10 to serial cable and then this is an adapter that converts serial to USB. So you plug these two together and that will enable you to connect the hand controller to the laptop. So once you've installed ASCOM and EQ ASCOM and connected uh, the hand controller to the laptop, you should also in install Stellarium. Uh, the reason for that is that Stellarium includes uh, the, the ability to connect to a telescope through ASCOM uh, and uh, and that will enable you to actually see this little symbol you see here on your image uh, of the sky, the depiction of the sky in Stellarium. Uh, so you can actually get that feel of where your telescope is pointing in the sky. So with this setup, you can now actually control the mount both from indoors by using the controls on, on the EQ mod interface, by setting a rate here and then using north, south, east and west buttons to actually move your mount. Um, uh, but you can also still control it from outside with your hand controller. And that's important because with this setup, when you're doing your star alignment, you still need to be able to look through the telrad and move the mount at the same time, which of course you can't do using the EQ mod interface if that's indoors. So you'll be looking through the telrad and using the SynScan hand controller to, uh, to move they make those fine adjustments to put the alignment star into the middle of the three red rings on the tail rad. And then you can move indoors and then, for example, when you slew to a target that you want to image, you can then start taking some shots, some framing shots, and adjusting the pointing of the mount using the EQ mod interface, which is really nice because you've got those two things side by side on your screen. So that works really nicely. Uh, of course, we're still using the tail rad to help uh, get alignment stars in the, in the field of view, uh, as I mentioned. Now, after you've done your star alignment, Stellarium is showing you where your telescope is pointing. You can uh, move to targets by clicking on them and then doing I think it's control uh, control three uh, in in Stellarium, and it will move to the target, and you'll be able to see on EQ mod uh, the RA and deck that it's at. So the final uh, step in this evolutionary process, or at least this is as far as I've got, because this is actually the setup I use now, uh, and that is to eliminate the hand controller completely from the story. And in fact, you'll see actually I've taken the tail rad off as well. Uh, so I've really now stripped bare a lot of the, uh, the stuff that was out, outside there. Uh, and I'm connecting the, the mount now directly from the actual mount head. It's the, it's the RJ45 connector that the the coiled black cable from the hand controller used to plug into, you take that out and now you plug in this thing called uh, an EQDIR cable. Now to be more precise, uh, it's an FTDI EQDIR USB cable. And that's uh, got, an, as I say, an RJ45 connector. And one end to plug into the mount just here and then a USB connector on the other end uh, that plugs into your laptop. You may need an extension lead depending on how far apart the two, the two things are. Now, I've, I've bought a number of different uh, EQDIR cables, and I found the variation in quality to be quite dramatic. Some of them were really horrible and plastic. Some of them, the actual coating on the cable didn't like the cold at all and went really hard and stiff. Um, this one I got from Lynx Astro. Uh, it's made by Lynx Astro, but sold by First Light Optics. And that's really nice. It's the, uh, the actual outer coating. I don't know if it's silicon or something, but it's... It seems a well-made well cable. I've had no issues with it at all, so that's one I would recommend. Uh, so you might be wondering with this setup, well, hang on a minute, how do you do your, your star alignment? Of course, now we can't control the mount at all from outside. We can only control it from inside um, using using EQ mod or using ASCOM. Uh, and uh, that's where, uh, that's true. And, and of course, the tail rad now serves no purpose we can't really go outside and move the mount to get the tail rad pointing on, on a star for star alignment. So that, that really is just binning that whole method 
uh, of doing star alignment and replacing it with something else. And that something else is called uh, plate solving. And it really is, as I say on the slide there, it's really a, a wonderful thing. Uh, and uh, it gives you so much power and control over what's, what's going on. Um, plate solving can replace star alignment completely and eliminate the need for the tail rag or the hand controller. Uh, now I'm going to do a separate tutorial about plate solving, but just to give you a, a flavour of what it does, uh, after you've set up your mount, put everything on it, balanced it and polar aligned it, you would then put it in the home position, uh, make sure this uh, EQDIR cable is connected, switch the mount on so it's got its reference, it will wake up thinking, OK, I'm pointing at, uh, at North Celestial Pole, uh, or at least that's what it assumes. You've done no star alignment, so it's got no corrections anywhere. Uh, and uh, and then you go indoors. Uh, and uh, once you go indoors, you slew to uh, a, a target or a bright star that's relatively close to where you want to image on in that session. And uh, then you plate solve. And the plate solving gets your camera to take a picture and then analyzes that picture against a database of all the stars in the sky and figures out where in the sky it's pointing. It doesn't need to be pointing at a bright star. It can just be pointing at an area of space uh, and uh, it just recognizes the pattern of stars in that space. And it starts with where it commanded the mount to move to and searches spirally outwards from that point until it finds a match. And I use uh, a piece of software called ASTAC, which is free. And I use that from within Sequence Generator Pro. Uh, so uh, essentially, I do something in Sequence Generator Pro called Solve and Sync. And what Solve and Sync does, as, as I said, it takes a picture, calls up ASTAC, and says, please solve this for me and tell me where I'm pointing. Uh, ASTAC comes back and says, this is the RA index of where you're pointing. And then it adds that to EQ mod as a sync point. And it's, that's equivalent to doing a star alignment on your hand controller or doing a control three sync uh, within Stellarium. It amounts to the same thing. So now you don't need to find, get your telescope pointing at a bright uh, star. You just point it somewhere relatively close to where you want to image so you're not having big errors uh, in that part of the sky. Uh, and uh, and you do a solve and sync. And once you've done the solve and sync, uh, you then slew to the nearest available bright star purely for the purpose of, of getting your focus really good. And I use a baton off mask for that. So I'll move to a bright star, pop the baton off mask on, get my focus right, take the baton off mask off again, and then I can just uh, slew uh, to my target and probably plate solve again to make sure I'm pointing really accurately. But I'll leave, I'll leave it there and uh, I'll do a separate video actually demonstrating plate solving so you can see how, how it works and how to do it. I hope you found this uh, useful. That's certainly the sort of evolutionary journey that I've been on with my Skywatcher HEQ5. Uh, if you have an EQ6, EQ8 or any of the other Skywatcher go-to mounts, the story will be exactly the same. And uh, I wish you clear skies and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.